Is Pope Francis related to some of the stories of sexual corruption coming out of Argentina? In the last week, there's been two stories, one regarding Bishop Zanchetta and perhaps Pope Francis allegedly covering up for him. And then also the story of a actress slash model slash prostitute who made allegations about Pope Francis and his friend Gustavo Vera and whether those allegations might be true. The interesting element is she came up dead uh, this past week, just two weeks before she was going to testify. So, again, another sketchy situation that might have connections with Pope Francis coming off of this Roman summit. I'm joined here today with Timothy Gordon. Timothy, how are you? I'm well. I'm concerned, and I'm I'm listening to the news in such a way as to heighten the concern, but I'm well on that. Good. Good. Before we get started, I just want to remind everyone to please like and subscribe to this video. If you're listening on iTunes, please rate the show. Leave us a review over there. We'd appreciate it. And uh, let's get started. So, Tim, the the main story that we saw was one that broke on um, New York Times. And the title is Argentine Bishop's Case Overshadows Pope Pope's Sex Abuse Summit. And uh, the lead off paragraph goes like this. The Associated Press has reported that the Vatican knew as early as 2015 about Bishop Gustavo Zanchetta's inappropriate behavior with seminarians. He was also allowed to stay on as a bishop of the northern Argentine Diocese of Iran until 2017, when he resigned suddenly only to be given a top job at the Vatican by Francis, his confessor. New new documents published by the Tribune of Salta newspaper show that the original 2015 complaint reported that Zanchetta had gay porn on his cell phone involving young people having sex, as well as naked images of Zanchetta masturbating that he sent to others. The age of the young people, it's in quotes, young people is not clear. My take is the age of the young people matters because, I mean... Yeah. An old lady at the store the other day called me young, and I was—I mm. mean, she, she's she's wrong, but I'm I'm glad to be able to pass myself off as young. But it's a relative matter, you know. I mean, a 20 year old person is, by most of our accounts, young. Is this a 10 year old? You know, uh, right? 14 you know, year old, 14 year old, or a nine year old like uh, Prophet Muhammad? What is it? You know, right. but we we need to know. And the New York Times has its tongue in its cheek, I feel like, as it reports this. It's just that it hasn't broken yet, I suppose. But when you read about it on a Catholic outfit, obviously there's more enthusiasm for uncovering such facts, I'm guessing, just given the positions of the relative outfits. But New York Times, uh, where I'm reading this, is... (laughs) They have some homework to do. We got to know. We got to have them ages. Well, isn't it? It's kind of a problem, too. I mean, you can obviously if I see a picture of a, you know, a 16 year old, I'm saying, well, he's, you know, 15 to 17. If I see a picture of a 10 year old, I'm like, yeah, he could be 13. You know, if you see a picture of a five year old, maybe he's seven. It's hard just seeing an image unless you actually have info on these people. Now, one of the interesting elements is. Um, The New York Times reports, but Francis told his summit Sunday that Vatican legislation criminalizing possession of child porn involving children under age 14 should change to include older victims. So that's good. I guess right now on the books, it's 14. So if you have pornography of a 15 year old, you're not criminalized at at Vatican City as child porn. What? What what kind of? You're all good. Yeah. Nightmare situation is that? That is a nightmare situation for the <laughs> for the rest of us. But for, for people in that world, I guess it's 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 convenient. Look, it's it's I mean, birds, if it's true that birds of a feather usually flock together, this won't hold up in court and investigative reporting requires more evidence than this. But if that's true, as most of us would common sense hold then this is yet one more drop in the comprehensive bucket of Pope Francis having friends that are simply unsavory characters, isn't it? Because I didn't know who Zanchetta was before this. No no one knew. No one knew, right. So so yet one more guy. I mean, just how many of these friends can he have? 
apparently he has a never ending flow of them. Yeah. And what, what's what I don't know if you picked up, Tim, on the on that one detail in the New York Times where it says that Bergoglio was his confessor. Oh, I did. Yeah. So I, this means sticks out. Yeah, this means that Bergoglio was hearing the man's confession. Now, you cannot, as a Catholic priest, act on what you hear in the confessional. Right. That that sword is probably going to become a shield. Yeah. He's going to say, oh, this is the 100 percent right. reason I would do. I didn't reveal. Yeah, maybe. Right. Because it was it was a confess. It was in a confession. Therefore, I couldn't act on it. I couldn't report it. And I have a I have a hunch about this, Tim. And Ooh. I've had one priest somewhat confirm it for me that in these networks, they legally both in civil law. Well, I guess it doesn't really count civil law, but in canon law for sure, they actually confess to one another in order to bind the other priests and bishops. So if you're McCarrick yeah. and you go to Bernadine, like, hey, I need to make my confession, and then you let him in on some of your sexual crimes or your misdeeds, you have now bound the hands of Bernadine so that he can never report you. Wow. Yeah. No. That's, and then that's you go over to Mahoney sensible. and you and they all do it with one another. And then they're like, well, yeah, I couldn't do anything. Confes yeah. Confession. So here's an example of a guy. He's got gay porn on his phone, young people. And then he's got these selfies of himself masturbating. It's a priest. These, this is not the, a priest, you know, selfies aren't a great idea, but these selfies are horrible. Not, not cool. Nobody are, wants to, are, nobody wants to see those. Some <laughs> mini new selfies. Yeah, I mean, a little, nobody, little, little Zanchetta selfies. That's no, not a good idea. No, never do that. Never do that. Um, and what's crazy is these are out there, you know, and this guy's a priest. This guy's a bishop. I wish that were a strange concept anymore. Yeah. But go, let me, going back to your, your theory, which I think is mm -hmm. a, a good one, Sit, when there are widespread networks, whether we're talking about networks of, of lavender homosexuals, pedophiles, networks of money channelers or whatever, money funnelers, whatever it is, the rest of us, the generally speaking law abiding, are like, oh, that's weird. They have this whole system for, for crime. And, you know, it's kind of like, duh. The, any... I mean, people would be like, if you're making three podcasts a week, there's probably some kind of system you fall. It's like, yeah, when you look at anything, it's granular. You're looking at the details. Right. Anything that works that's recurring. Yes, there's a system. And guess what? Your, your theory about, about uh, the confession being used as a defense is, is yeah, I'm just considering it for the first time. Now, I just considered something for the first time yesterday hearing breaking news in Southern California that a priest had, had been laicized, old priest, had been laicized for really, really, I mean, really, he kissed a woman on the back of the neck and he acts, he like on top of the clothes, like brushed a, a teenager's, um, uh, they're both acts on females and they were, they're bad, but compared to the stuff coming out, about other people, you'd think this is really odd. Part of the system going forward, but he got laicized right away. It just happened three weeks ago. Which, di which diocese? Uh, Archdiocese of Fresno. Archdiocese mm -hmm. of okay. Fresno. I can tell you more after the thing, but okay. it, it, there's a. Re but the point is, think about why. Why would this happen? Part of the system, like you're saying about the other thing. Why, if any priest has any smidge of a hetero allegation against him. Why are they going to do this? Because it's a legal above board way of fudging the numbers. They know that this is probably yeah. what they're really dealing with at the summit in Rome is okay. Here's, here's the strategy going forward. Any priest out there that's ever done had one little allegation with a woman or even a teenage girl lay aside them. So we can say that they're just our right. patsies. Yeah. Think say, about it. yeah. Say, Hey, we've removed this many priests. Or we heard right. this allegation, and within four months, he was laicized. Exactly. Boom. Which is, this was quick action. And it's like, that's pretty PG compared to the Cardinal Pell type stuff that's mm -hmm. become so common.
So my whole point is, yeah, I think you're right. And then they, they, they have a system. It's not an accident. They didn't stumble into it. They've been doing it for decades. So they're probably like, we all just confess to each other. And then, you know, we're protected by uh, the the seal of the confessional. Yeah. And you could even have, I'm going to term a new, a new word here, weaponized confessions. So let's say uh, McCarrick no, thinks that a certain other bishop knows about his misdeeds. And he's thinking, man, I could get in big trouble if Bishop so-and-so blows the whistle. So at the USCCB, he goes up to Bishop so-and-so. Hey, Bishop so-and-so, can you hear my confession? Boom. Drops the misdeed in the confession. He just locked up that bishop. Right. Burke. Let's say it's Burke. Burke's yeah. going to go yeah. to the Yeah, and he goes to Burke. Burke, I need to go to confession with you. And then if Burke ever goes to the authority, he can say, you broke the seal of confession. You need to be laicized. And it's a major storm in right. Rome at the Signatura. It's a fly in the ointment. Yeah. Because I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I've just considered it now for the first time, but they're they're smart. I mean, yeah. organized crime is smart. Your street criminals are usually IQ 90s, right? You learn this studying the criminal law, but organized crime is pretty organized, is surprisingly organized. That's what this is. Yeah. So something to consider I, for people out there. I knew, uh, I don't want to re reveal too many details, but I knew a gentleman who oversaw some seminarians, and, and the rule is... I don't hear a confession. You go, you confess to everyone else, but the guy who's in charge of seminary discipline doesn't yep. hear confessions. And that's smart, right? Yep. Because, you know, if you think about well, why would he want to be so unpastoral? Well, he's thinking, you know, if I need to eject you from the seminary, if you need to be removed from the program, I need to be able to build a case against you. And if I've heard half of the case in confession, I just lost half the case. So he needs exactly. to be an objective, you know, judge of a seminarian's past and his character. So I think that's smart. I think, you know, it may need to be that bishops can't confess to bishops or, you know, uh, priests can't confess to bishops. That's another thing. If you were a priest and you got called into the office on some allegation, you could begin by saying, uh, Your Excellency, I need to go to confession to you. That's true. And you lock them up. He can, he can never, ever talk about what, what you've been accused of because you locked him up in the seal of confession. I mean, this is this is evil. This is evil. Evil strategery. Yeah. yeah. But 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 organized crime is full of evil strategery, sure. of course. So they we shouldn't be we will be surprised at the particulars. But as a generality, we, we ought not be surprised. I mean, there's a way that they've been getting away with this. They are a network for a reason. That's right. And with Zanchetta, you know, his confessor is Bergoglio, Pope Francis. And he's like, yeah, I took, you know, 38 um, selfies of me masturbating again last week. <laughs> I mean, it's like, <laughs> you know. Old habits die hard. Yeah, my phone you know? is still full, you know of, full of gay porn. You know, okay, well, you know, God's mercy is infinite. Just keep on trying harder next week. In the confessional, Pope Francis is like, who am I to judge? It's like, well, you're, you're, you're my confessor. Right. So you're you're actually acting in personam Christi. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So, who am I to offer you a penance? It's like, well, you're, you're a Roman Catholic priest yeah. and the sovereign father. Yeah, it's the, uh, it's the tribunal of penance. That's confession. It's, it's a judge. He wears a priestly stole when he hears your confession because he's in persona Christi and Christ is our judge. So um, anyway, it's it's a pretty messed up situation. And it seems that Francis and the Vatican knew about these se sexual misdeeds two years before the man resigned. Yep. I mean, that's 24 months or whatever it is of a guy who is not fit for ministry. Right. You know, abusing yourself well, with selfies not a good call for a successor of the Holy Apostles. Not a good look, not a good call. Yeah, bad optics in more yeah. than one way. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Uh, yeah, the, the incriminating documents contain a personal testimony by the bishop's personal secretary. Lots of, this is very personal, evidently, keep mm -hmm. using this word, this is from LifeSite, as well as a second signed testimony by five different priests of Zanchetta's diocese of Oran which were presented to the Holy See's representative in Argentina on April 22nd, 2016. Um, 
they were drawn up at the request of the Apostolic Nuncio. I mean, this thing has a paper trail, is yeah. what, what you're saying. Uh, Paul, Emil, Tessere testified that Chancellor Secretary Luis Amancio Diaz discovered pornographic selfies on September 21st, 2015, after the bishop had asked him to copy a folder of photos from the phone in order to post several of them on the desk of the Facebook page. Do you think maybe this was like a prank? He was pulling that just like like to backfired. He was like, yo, yo, check, check, uh, check my photos on my phone. There's something I want you to see. And then it's like oh, him. No. Oh my God, it's so horrible. And, and then it's like, it's so cringy. It's, it's so cringy. It's it's horrible. I don't know what why would you have anyone holding your phone if you do again? You know, my photos on my kids. I mean, uh, in Argentina, is this what bishops do? They're like, well, check out these selfies. (laughs) Yeah, right. You know? (laughs) Check this out. There was also something on the New York Times um, that, uh, there maybe was another article, where he goes around and his phone is making noises of people panting and having, like, these sexual noises. And he'll say, like, (laughs) hey, there's some things I haven't even sent you yet to, like, seminarians and priests. And they're like, "Uh uh-huh. I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want, I, enough. Basta. Yeah. Basta cozy, as the Italians say. Yeah, no, I know. The, the noises were funny, but did you, are you saying, like, <clears throat> joking aside, you, you thought he was doing that as a joke? Or, no. I mean, it's serious stuff, but I I, I don't see I, how not, this is even funny. Like, you are a bishop. And right. you, you don't hand someone your phone. You're like, check out what I did over the weekend. And it's like, whoa, what is this? You know, like, what? what? Get this out Dude, of my face. Take a take a look at. I took a picture of my prize winning zealias here. I want you to look right. at. Them. You look at them. <laughs> you're like, whoa, bleach the Dude. eyes. Right. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's what it was. I, I, I've, least, I have never heard of a male in my entire life ever doing such a thing. No. I guess that's a don't. testimony to the people I hang out with, but. That would never happen. You know, showing, showing. So, well, I mean, I think what it is to, to, to be a little more serious, we're, we're you know, Thomistic, uh, Aristotelian in our approach to habit. What, what, what bad habits do, vicious habits. When sin becomes dull, you know, it's a spectrum. Right. You start doing something really, really mortally offensive to God that's going to get your, you condemned. And it gets dull. And then you go to a higher plane of outrageousness and and offense before God. Right. And then you're like, how, how does anyone get to the point where they're a rapist or a murderer? They just keep climbing higher right. on that plane yeah. where the dullness of the sin in our compute already can keep us in intellect is dulled still further down. So people that have this is how criminals make mistakes. Even when you look at the criminal law, they make mistakes because it's like. Yeah, if I, if I, I mean, I, I wouldn't do that, but if I did something wrong, I stepped out of line. A good student tries cheating on a test once, he's paranoid, right? But right. if you're doing it every test, you're, you're callous to your bad actions. And he probably just, honestly, joking aside, he probably just forgot that he had this photo bank full of, you know, filth. And he was like, yeah, just having a secretary do a task. Oh, you think that's I what it was? It, I think so. I, I don't think it was literally the prank that we're, I mean, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> right. Maybe he's a prankster. Right. But, uh, <laughs> well, okay, so I'm switching over here to the, the story at LifeSite News, which has some different details. Um, yeah. And it says, after reviewing the photos in the presence of two priests, Archbishop Cardinello was moved by the gravity of the situation because in the words of the priest who signed the second document, Zanchetta was a personal friend of the Holy Father. Cardinello therefore decided to personally contact the Cardinal Primate of Argentina, Mario Aurelio Poli, who is also a personal friend of Pope Francis and was appointed by him to succeed as Archbishop of Buenos Aires in 2018, that is after the Pope became Pope. He also asked the priest to contact the papal nunciature and asked them to contact Cardinal Poli about the delicate information he would have regarding the Bishop of Oran. The priest add nothing further about this request, implying that they carried it out, end quote. What I don't like about this is this is Zanchetta getting special treatment because he's a personal friend of Pope Francis. Of course. Yeah. If it had been deacon so-and-so who had a phone like this or even another bishop, 
You know, maybe they would have reported to the authorities or gone ahead with some sort of canonical procedure. But like, oh, he's a personal friend of the Holy Father. Yeah. Give him plan B. Yeah. Give him. And what was plan B? They tell us exactly. They go to the Cardinal Primate of Argentina. That's Buenos Aires. The successor of Francis. Right. Right. And then they put it up through the papal nunciature, which puts a... um, uh, a diplomatic, um, what's the word for it? Not immunity. What would you call that? A seal. Like a diplomatic seal? Yeah. yeah a dip- which puts a diplomatic seal on it and send it to Rome. Right. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's a sexual abuse class A prime, not A. Right. It's, it's, uh, it's set aside like, like the chosen people were set aside by God. You know, that. This is this is the kind that is attended with a wink and a nod. Yeah. This is a Francis, another friend, yet another Francis friend who's a bit more than a little nefarious. Yeah. Yeah, he's a pervert. This guy's a perv. This guy has been given over to his lusts and he cannot be placing his hands on children in confirmation. He cannot be consecrating the most holy Eucharist. This is horrible. We lay Catholics are tired of this in the church. It's disgusting. Here's, here's some more bad stuff from, um, from LifeSite. This is a quote. On an occasion previous to these events, when the bishop was in the administrative office of his diocese in the presence of two laymen who were members of the Curia, Manuel Alberto Guerrero and Jose Save, Saavedra, sorry to butcher, butcher these names, Audio was downloaded into the cell phone of the bishop that he carried in his pants pocket, which sounded like panting and cries from sexually explicit videos, which he sought to explain by saying, there are things that get sent to you, wrote the priest. Ha ha ha. By your by your porn subscription site, they sent them to you. you, Or your friends, your nasty Mm -hmm. friends who are like, check this out. So I'm guessing that something was delivered to him and he. He opened it. It was kind of a night night baby moment. And it was some sort of video that these these laymen in the cure were like, um, that doesn't sound like a sports video or you know <laughs> <laughs> It is, it's basketball. Is they're, that they're is that is that hard. is that a audio file for, of Gregorian chant from your confirmation service last night? No. Right. It's not. Well not not the kind of Gregorian chant I've ever listened to. No. It's panting, not chanting is what it says. And then he goes on to say he also had strange attitudes towards seminarians. For example, when there were some opportunities in which they were not in the presence of the seminary rector, he would monitor them at night, passing through the rooms at late hours with a flashlight or ask them to give him massages. That's a dead giveaway every time. If some dude like, hey, you want a massage? Say no and run away. It's bad. Yeah, it's not normal. It's not normal. I don't like go to the bros and be like, after we decorated gingerbread and be like, hey, can I get a massage after that? I'm like, I'm kind of tight <laughs> <laughs> after icing the edges, you know, I need a massage. <laughs> yeah. No, not good. Yeah. Okay. So it goes on or ask. Okay. So he was going around late night with a flashlight or not ask good. them to give him massages or enter into their rooms at the time when they are waking up and sitting on their beds. Or incite them to drink alcohol or show preferences for those who were more attractive. He was also obsessively omnipresent in the life of the seminary, creating a sensation of asphyxia. All of this is according to comments made by seminarians themselves, end quote. This is this statement was made by priests. Uh, yeah, the, that's sketchy, man. Yeah. The, the nighttime. You like get up to go to the bathroom sketchy. and he has like a flashlight. Oh, hey, what are you ex- doing? hey, your excellency. He's like, not much. You want a massage? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's 3.45 a.m. I'm yeah, just kidding. I'm good. And he's like, yeah, what are you doing with this flashlight like in his shoes? And you're like, I'm doing what a lot of guys do in the middle of the night, getting up to go to the bathroom. What are you doing is more right. like it. He's like, I'm doing what lots of perverts do. Yeah. I, Par- how does this work? Apparently friends of Francis do this. But what, I mean, but the thing is, and again, I don't want to get into so-called victim blaming here, but they're not, these are grown men. We're not talking about pedophilia now. These are seminarians. Why wouldn't you, 
I mean, don't they have to guard their reputation a little more? If he's going around, if, if someone comes in your room at night, you know it's inappropriate. Here's what I'm thinking. This guy's a perv. He gets elevated. He's good friends with Francis. Francis is his confessor. That's an intimate relationship. I think if you're a perv bishop and, you're, and your best friend confessors the pope, you're like, cool, I'm set. I can be a little bold because the guy upstairs is going to cover for me. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I think. Maybe he gets more bold. I mean, look at look at the career of James Martin since the election of Pope Francis. Pre-2013, yeah, I never was a fan. I was like, yeah, this is this is weak. I didn't even know who he was before yeah. this. Then after 2000 year, every year he was doing the creep. Getting mm. more and more. So now he has like, you know, rainbows in the background and, you know, he's openly tweeting about LGBT, openly tweeting about parades, etc. Why is he doing that? Because he knows Pope Francis backs him. Pope Francis invited James Martin to the World Meeting of Families in Ireland. People, take right. that red pill. Swallow that red pill. Pope Francis had James Martin speak in Ireland at the World Meeting of Families. James Martin is endorsed and improved by Pope Francis all the day long. Right. Take that red pill. That's right. Doubtless, when the Hefe is the, you know, your, your, your boy, and there doesn't seem to be a policy against your illicit behavior, it's, it's been, uh, it's lyseity has been falsely acknowledged. Of course you're emboldened. Uh, and I guess that's, I mean, and when there's a culture and a schema in place where it's not just him doing this, it's all of them. And it's a network. They're all buddies and they're all getting away with it. Then yes, of course you're emboldened. Yeah. Uh, and then we, we consumers of news, um, remember when Francis said we're consumers like, uh, people who are, who are romantically attracted to feces. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess that's all you can do when when these news these news stories are piling up and you don't want people to listen to them. Just accuse them of being weirdos for listening to your weirdo friends. Right. But yeah, I mean, we consume it and it's it's a novelty to us, obviously, because I don't know people that do this kind of stuff. But we hear it and we're like, oh, wow. But again, there's a system, there's a network, there's a protocol and these guys have a way to make it work. That's what mafia club means when they say we are part of St. Gallen mafia. We're part of a lavender mafia yeah. in, in this other story. We're, we're part of La Alameda mafia. You know, they have, that's what a cartel is. Yeah. And that's people. That's what we're dealing with is a cartel and, and or, or cartels, um, nested hierarchy cartels within cartels. They have a system in place. It's new to us, but let's, as far as we can, as law abiding citizens, let's try to stop being naive. This stuff is happening. It's being covered up. Is there, are there any doubts? Do we have to keep saying he hasn't been tried in a court of law? So we still say allegedly, but it's, it's being reported by even New York times. It's not yeah. just the coprophagiacs is what Pope Francis called us in the right wing Catholic media. It's New York times. Yeah. Take that red pill. Yeah. Uh, so just to give you a bit of a timeline, in 2015, on October 3rd, Zanchetta received a phone call conveying an urgent order to present himself in Rome for reasons unspecified. Right. Amancio says that when Zanchetta returned on October 8th, he told him he had been shown the obscene images by officials there in Rome. He denied to Amancio that they were his, claiming that they were altered photos or fakes, presumably repeating what he had told Vatican officials. So he gets called into Rome. Rome has the pictures because they went under the diplomatic seal. And they're like, dude, what is this? And he's like, I don't know. Those are fake photos. Those are like doctored. What? Yeah. Doing the high school student thing where yeah. you ask him something <laughs> and he's like, I don't know, but that's gross. Can you can you put <laughs> that away? Out. What is that? You're like, dude, this is you. This, this is, is your you. like. <laughs> this, is, this is your ring. You're wearing it right now. Your hands yeah. in this photo. And he's like, yeah, like, oh. where were you on spring break? I, I don't know. I was with my grandma. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe not. I was doing community service <laughs> with my grandma and my dead uncle. Yeah. yeah, you just contradicted yourself, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Now, here's some more it, interesting part. Although it is not stated in the documents that Zanchetta met personally with Pope Francis during this trip, the claim that he had done so was later made by one of the signers of the document, Father Juan Jose Manzano, to the Associated Press. So one of the priests says Zanchetta got called in and actually talked to the big Papa Francis. Right. And Manzano's the, the guy that you're mainly going to hear about from here on out. Uh, you know, the, the elements of the story that are coming out are, are mainly Manzano. Who's Manzano? He's the priest, right? He's the priest. Oh, he's a se- yeah. is he the seminary rector or is he? No, he is the, I'm looking for it here. I mean, he's the one that's. Oh, here we go. The documents, the, the documents were signed by the vicar generals of the diocese of Iran, Father Gabriel um, Acevedo and Father Juan Manzano, the seminary rector. Oh, no, that's another guy, Father Martin Alacron and two other priests. So he's one of the signers in the document. And apparently there are two vicar generals for the Diocese of Iran. He's one of them. Got it. Yep. So, so he's coming down. Gabriel, Father Gabriel Acevedo, Father Juan Jose Manzano. This, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. This is, these are weird lists. So and there's, I mean, a, there's, a, there's a, there's it's a ugly. photo of the, um, of the document. If you go to LifeSite, it's in Spanish, of course, but you can go check it out. You know, I'm kind of wondering, Tim, so he gets, so there actually, there is no actual abuse by Zanchetta. And I think that's going to be their claim. Well, he didn't actually sleep with the seminarian or actively abuse any minors or children. So he's, you know, we can't accuse him. How does that work in Rome? You know, he meets with Pope Francis, they close the door and he's like, now Zanchetta. We talked about the massages. You can't do the massages, right? We said that's not prudent, you know? We talked about the downloads to your phone. Not good. What, why are you still doing it? I tried, you know, I tried. I'm doing my best. They're not my pictures, they're fake pictures. But remember, they know this is the other element of how cabals operate. I'm speculating here, but this is how it usually operates. It operates this way in the criminal law. When things come out on full discovery, there's more than when there's smoke, there's fire, right? So he, he, we're saying there was an abuse of. Well, minors. I don't even want to say there's not abuse of minors if he's well, yeah, got young porn, people on his phone. Yeah, he's complicit. These go, and there's there's a good chance that it goes way way. It gets way way weirder in the rabbit hole, but. Also, if he's doing the flashlight checks of the room, sitting on the beds of seminarians, there's probably all, maybe not, but the likely next suspicion one ought to have, an investigator, a criminal investigator would have is there's a abuse of seminarians as well. If, if seminarian abuse were actually against the law, but yeah. it's against canon law. So if a church investigator is looking at this, that's what you're thinking 90% or more will be the next discovery. And they, they probably already know all this because the Vatican definitely knows more than you I. That's a deductively true statement. And if it's true, then they probably know it. So whatever the case is, yeah, your little hypo of the Pope ushers him in the room, closes the door. And I, I think what's happening, I think it's safe to say, is just like, okay, what? what this is sometimes what a, a boss at a law firm says. He comes in there and goes, if you write a brief that's less than perfect, they go, okay, what about this hole in this, in the way you wrote this? What about this hole in the story? What do you want me to do with that? And then the guy's like, ah, uh, I hadn't considered that. Or I didn't know you knew about that in his case. So the, it's more, I think what's happening, you know, when these guys are part of the network is they're just, when they get called in for censuring, it's no, there's no censuring at all. It's just, what do you want us to do with this, dude? You're making us look bad. Help us back, back, justify yeah. this or back can we, calculate can, it. Can we say that they're fake photos? Yes. Okay. Let's do that. That's right. what they say. Where did you get it from? Well, uh, you know, because we need to come I don't up know, with just some this, sort of defense. This guy sent it to me. All right, we'll block that guy on your phone. <laughs> you know right. I mean? <laughs> right. Right. You block that friend. Well, he's yeah. my best friend. Okay, well, don't say that. Right. And, and block him. Yeah. And treat him like a creep. You know, it's He's Antonio. Dead. We used to go have drinks with him. Oh, yeah, I know that guy. We'll block that guy. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. I have that. I might have that guy on my phone too. It's like, okay, we all block that guy. Yeah. That's that's what's happening at these backroom meetings when it's friend. I mean. Well, we're not saying, is, hold on, we're not saying that that is what happened with Francis and Zanchetta. You're saying that in these cartels, that's the kind of thing they basically are doing like a law firm and saying, look, here's it. They're, they're on the other side of the law. And they're like, here's how law works. We need plausible deniability. What can we cook up? That's what you're saying, sure. right? Sure. I'm speculating, but it's, it's, it's very, very well premised speculation that, uh, that it's the, it's virtually the only justification reasons by which this whole sex abuse crisis, we just had a summit, has been enabled to propagate for for decades after the 2002-2003 debacle, right? It, it's right. stuff like this because all the bishops who go down are like, you invited this guy, you called this guy to your chancery or whatever. This guy spoke to his new NCO who spoke to you. He, this guy came to the Vatican two years before, which is the, the fact pattern before us now. The fact pattern is he got called in in 2015. So what's up? Well, they're doing stuff like this. Yeah. And they're not they're not laicizing these guys or really even censoring them or taking them away from seminarians or children. It has to be something like this, not a direct quote, but there's no other way that this story goes forward. The dog won't hunt. Yeah. Uh, so it gets a little thicker because you might think, well, Pope Francis, he's zero tolerance, guys. He says he's zero tolerance. So he if there was something real, you know, he would have moved him. Well, guess what? He did move him in 2017, December 19th. He made him a counselor for the administration of the patrimony of the apostolic see. What's that, Taylor? Well, the administration of the patrimony of the apostolic see, APSA, I guess we can call it APSA to save time, is the organism of the Holy See which manages the economic money and property of the Vatican. It's, it's an honor. The position's an honor. Yeah. He got upgraded. He moved to Rome, and he's now running money. <laughs> what? <laughs> and this is after, we, we didn't report it because it's less juicy, but there are also two questionable property dealings that he had had. Um, according back, to that life site. Back in Ar article. Argentina? Yeah, back, back yeah. in Argentina. So this is not your money man. This is not your money no. wise guy that you, you, you would otherwise. That's not, a, that's not a prudent call. Right. And so now he's running real estate and property for the Holy See? Right. Why? After How? being a sketchy guy who's dishonest, pornography, selfies, whack selfies. I mean... Uh, Holy Father, bad move. Bad move. You gotta gotta find gotta find new friends. You are the average of the five the, people you spend the most time around. Told that, that to my that kids last night. Told that to my kids last night. They're talking about somebody. I said, "Hey, just don't hang out with that person. If if right. your five friends are um, opium addicts, probably you're an opium addict." Right. Or if four of your friends are good, I, I think it works out as mathematically as the little platitude reads. If four of your friends are saints and one's an opium addict, he's pulling down the average. He's still a draw on the situation. Now, if all five of them are opium addicts, you know, if, if such a large four of the five are, you know, a lot. Francis's group of friends are not yeah. glittering morally. And it, it's it's not good. It's not a good look. And I don't know. I don't know what we're supposed to what are we expected to say about this? Right. You know, I mean, what do you want me to do with this? Right. This is what, a bishop. This, this is a Catholic bishop. And, and it's and it's 2019. We've been through the summer of shame, the the tepid response to the summer of shame, continued cover ups. We've been through. I will not say one word, which just brought back painful memories that shouldn't even be memories. They should be daily lived. Of Pope Francis staggering silence before the dubia. Hmm. What I mean, we are it's a late hour. We're going into the seventh year of the pontificate. We're closing up six years. And yeah, what 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 are we supposed to do with this? I mean, that's why people yeah. largely watch this show. I don't always have the answer on an emotional yeah. level. It's like this is someone someone give us a good answer. What are we supposed to do with this that's productive? and honest and 
gives us a go forward basis. Yeah. I'm, I'm throwing up my hand. I, I'm just saying it's hard not to be anything but negative. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just to, just to retell the story, Pope Francis is the confessor priest to this guy named Zanchetta. As soon as Pope Bergoglio becomes the Pope, he elevates his buddy Zanchetta and makes him a bishop. Meanwhile, the bishop has taken these selfies of him masturbating, porn, child porn, young adult porn. We're not quite sure what it is. He's going around the seminary with a, with a flashlight. He's offering massages. He's sitting on the beds when the boys are when the seminarians are waking up in the morning. This is horrible. And then giving preferential treatment to the attractive ones yeah, like McCarrick used to do. Exactly. Like, ooh, he's he's attractive. Let him be my acolyte. And then when he gets busted, he gets upgraded and becomes a counselor for the administration of the patrimony of the Apostolic See, where he oversees money and property. And he already has a history of mismanaging property and real to real estate deals. I just noticed this, Tim, uh, when I opened up his Wikipedia bio page. Mm. The last line says at the end of 2018, Zanchetta was accused by three seminarians of sexual violence and by another 10. That's right. 10 of abuse of power and financial mismanagement. And he is absent. He's the absent guy. Yeah. He's the absent guy. Freaking believable. believable. This is this is the team Francis system and it has to stop. It's unacceptable. Right. It's unacceptable. No money for the Vatican folks. Close it up. Right. We got to boycott these. These this is this is foolish. This is <sighs> this is bored. This is mid this is Renaissance popes. It's worse. It seems worse it's, because it's Borgia plus. It's, it's yeah. moral and doctrinal. At least the Borgias were Orthodox. Jeez. Right. Yeah, the, it's always the irony is it's like we're we're having our our noses rubbed in it. Yeah. The irony is this always seems to be the way. When it's someone that's a bad financial guy, he's set in charge of like money, absa. <laughs> when it's a uh, a pervert, right? Like McCarrick, he's set in charge of all manner of things. I mean, I don't want to go through. Well, he's, he's set in he charge was, of the 2000, 2002 abuse correction. Abuse correction. Yeah, it's that's it's, <laughs> it's, I, it's like it's too strange to write. That's what I'm saying. I forgot about that. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's a weird M.O. But you know what it is? It's like people that accuse you of what they do. And this is a weird way to gaslight people. Right. Like you ever had someone that's like, dude, you just, uh, I, I, you know, We've been friends for a year, but I, I thought maybe you're you have a criminal record you didn't tell me about. And it's like, no, I don't. And then you find out like a week later that they do. Right. Like, this is a weird gaslighting thing. Mm -hmm. And gaslighting is one of the marks. <laughs> Does uh, that happen with your friends, Tim, out there in California? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it hasn't happened like, many times. I just wanted it good enough that, you know, you, you dude, I think you're uh you're taking extra cookies when no one's looking. I, I don't know. Well, um, no, James Martin has done this. If anyone is critical of the SSA agenda, the homo agenda, or as you called it in a video a while back, homo stuff, mm -hmm. that means that they are homosexuals. Oh, well, that's the Martel. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. new book. Yeah. And, yeah. And Martin, oh, yeah, it's in the Martel book, too. too. If there's yeah. any cardinal or bishop who's vocally against um, uh, homosexual abuse or anything, he is a repressed homosexual. Right. It's just another form right. of the gaslighting. Right. It's like when my, my, my three-year-old, no, my five-year-old bumps my three-year-old and she starts crying and then she's like, she hurt me too. No, she did right. it. You're just trying to get some sympathy. Right. So it's big with the four-year-olds. <laughs> yeah. yeah the, my my yeah. four-year-old twins do that all the time. My five -year -old like, does I just it. saw you hit her in the face. Like, <laughs> right. she, she hit me in the face before. I was like, well, yeah, everyone's hit someone in the face before. That's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm saying they don't even hit him in the face. They're like, he hit me too. I mean, the Martell book is another matter. I'm actually getting it today get from it? a friend who just, well, he yeah. just, he's, he's handing it off to oh, me okay. later today. Uh, who finished reading it and said, look, this, this looks really credible. So what's I, the title I again in the Every, closet of the Vatican yeah, or right. out of the closet of the Vatican, something yeah. like that. I mean, it's, it's extensively researched. So I don't want to, I'm not in the business of maligning, you and, know, and apparently he has a interviews. lot of interviews. Yeah. 1400. Yeah. Like that's, that's what you call doing your, doing your due diligence. 
And yes, he's got an agenda and he's gaining all this, but you know what I'm getting sick of? I'm getting sick of, well, this guy, this guy's, you know, this guy's not going to let us down because he was sort of conservative that one time, like the Cardinal pal. It's yeah. like, or Dolan. Yeah. Or, or, or Dolan. Or, well, I mean, we have it really bad in America, yeah. but, but Dolan also hasn't been accused of, uh, I mean, convicted of the things that Pell has in a common law court. It's like, dude, I, no one's getting the benefit of the doubt now. Like, I don't care if you are a, a little right of center or even somewhat right. right of the center. It's like, if, if, if the glove fits, yeah, you know, let's, in, let's investigate in the opposite sense and move not to acquit in this sense. Like, right. I just, I don't trust. So this, yeah, they're, they're going to make you feel like you're a, you're a coprophagiac. Mm-hmm. If they can do it at this stage. Of Every the time you say that, I, I get story. the heebie jeebies. You got to stop saying that. I hate that word. Well, we're not it's, supposed to be being taught terms that are dirty by I know. Pontiff. I had to go look that up. I know. It's I disgusting. Mean, I don't know why Pope Francis. Learn? I learned it from Pope Francis is where I learned it. It's like the 80s drug commercial where the dad comes in with the box of drugs. He's like, where'd you learn to do this? And when the yeah. kid says, I learned it from watching <laughs> you, okay? Yeah, right. I remember that one. You remember that one? Yeah. That was a good one. Yeah. That was right up there with This Is Your Brain on Drugs. We had good commercials during our cartoons. You'd be watching Spider-Man, you get that commercial. And you're like, oh, I'm not yeah. doing drugs. That's bad. But yeah, we're learning it. We're, you know, where did you learn that? I learned it from you, Holy Father. It's yeah, gross. That's right. I don't like it. I want to remove I it. I want to bleach it out. Okay, we have, we, we're running out of time a little bit. We didn't talk about the, um, the Argentine prostitute Natasha. slash driver slash model slash actress. She has every job in the world. Natasha and, Height. Yeah, yeah. And her um, accusation regarding Gustavo Vera and Pope Francis. Now, Natasha Height um, was found dead last weekend. God rest her soul. And this is two weeks before she was going to testify against a guy named Gustavo Vera, who is a longtime best friend buddy with Pope Francis. There's a plentitude of photos of Gustavo Vera at Santa Mara Santa Marta in the Vatican City visiting with Pope Francis, pictures of them hugging, hanging out, Gustavo Rivero participating in, in Vatican meetings, panels. He's all over the place. Natasha yep. Height says he's not a good guy. He himself is a sex trafficker in in Argentina. But I want to first who is this Natasha Height? I had read that she was a prostitute, and then on some other stuff I read that she was a model actress. Tim, who is Natasha? Is she a prostitute? Well, she, she is a pro. I mean, the reliable info is she is a prostitute. Uh, she she admits she's a prostitute in that one interview she did on the the Argentine right. like like gossip talk yeah. show. Yeah, I, I forget what and she's it's a called. driver, right? She's a driver. A driver? Too. No, I was like a truck driver. She said, <laughs> "She said I'm, I saw a model and a driver. You saw a model and an actress." Okay, um, but but always uh, prostitutes and on the side. I think the, the prostitution rings in Argentina are slightly culturally different. It's not a plug for cultural relativism. It's yeah. they're just it's more acceptable there because she does this other interview uh, with this young man, and he's like, "Yeah, my my girlfriend's a prostitute," and here's what she said. And you're like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 yeah, like your girlfriend's Everyone's a prostitute." Just, Can we say get a new girlfriend? Right, <laughs> right, like, what? right. But what, the, the the thrust of of again the the network the cabal uh, its mo for which for which um, Gustavo Vera works with La Alameda Foundation its stated mission is divide against human trafficking slave labor child exploitation this is ca- kind of like the Clinton Foundation right mm. and, and the allegation against it that's being worked up right now through the Natasha Height story what her 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 big cause celeb was that they were essentially, yes, they were running other child trafficking rings out of business in Argentina, but they were doing it in a mon- monopolistic way where they're there. This was convenient for them because they wanted to be kingpin. This is also how the cartels work. Right. This organized is organized crime. Approach. Yeah. Specifically drug cartels. They say they'll often work with Intel Group, CIA, running black ops. Police. They, they, so, yeah, police. Uh, the church. Uh, authority groups, the church. Yeah, go see Godfather say, 1, 2, and 3 for details. It's a big thing. It yeah. is. It is. It, it, there are, and they say, we're getting rid of all of them, and then they're, they're funneling money. Even uh, Breaking Bad, right? There's a lot of this. 
getting rid of all the bad competition on a black market, whatever the black right. market is, drugs or sex or human trafficking. And in the meanwhile, they're they're actually the big kingpin and they, they've just eliminated all their competition while looking like a good guy. This is the charge that's being brought forward against Gustavo Vera. And she, uh, N- Natasha Haidt, I don't know, I don't have it right up in front of me, but she did one of our joke tweets, right? Where she's like, hey, if I turn up dead, I'm not... Yeah, let I'm me, not going anywhere. Let me, read, I, let me try to find her tweet real quick. Okay, here it is. Uh, this is a trans, she wrote in Spanish, but she wrote, notice, I will not commit suicide. I will not be bought off or drown in a bathtub, nor will I shoot myself in the head. So if that happens, it wasn't me. Save this tweet. Then the lady, that was on April 5th, 2018. In February 2019, she's naked, dead in a, in a room somewhere. Now, to be fair, you, you might you might uh, pick this up. There there is a backstory. There's a, a plausible account for a hooker, how she wound up naked and dead because she had cocaine in her system. Now, I so I heard she had cocaine. They sense co- found cocaine on her um, in her nasal passages. I didn't hear that they found it in her system. I thought they counted as system and blood system. Maybe, maybe. Not. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I, and that's kind of an important thing because if you if you killed a, a hooker. You could rub some cocaine on her nose. Well, I've also heard this is why I thought I'm the, it was I don't know. I'm just blood system. Neither okay. do I. But I heard it was a mixture of alcohol and cocaine. Okay. I don't. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I right. I don't. I, I've never done cocaine, so I don't know. But I thought you could mix it with alcohol. Maybe. Maybe not. But the story is that um, you know people think either the cocaine was laced with something. It might have been forcibly given. This is being looked into right now. Right. It's, it's not, um, who, who was that Buffalo priest that turned up suicided, uh, yes. that, that church militant was reporting right. on, you know, oh, like a week before he turned state's evidence or whatever it was. Uh, he was living a clean life, I think was a holy priest. The, the, the suicide is really shoddily done. Yeah. And there's not a plausible account for how he would have died. He talked to his sister like the night before. Yeah. But now it is a tougher sell with with Natasha Height because yeah. she is a prostitute. Of her way of life. Yeah. Yeah. Known to do drugs. Known to like the code. party. Yeah. I mean, Protestants usually are like, oh, I don't drink. They usually they like to party. You know, if you hire a prostitute, you want to party. You don't want to like do a Bible study or pray the rosary. Typically. Usually not. Yeah. I, usually I, not. I hear. Yeah. I hear. Yeah. Right. So, um, yeah, I mean, so there is that problem. And of course, they could, like you said, lace the cocaine, um, have it cut higher percentage. I don't really know how all this works. I've never done cocaine either, so I don't know. But she apparently died of a, co- a cocaine overdose, right? That's what they're saying. Yeah, yeah. Now she said, "Here's her accusation." Height, Natasha Height. She wrote, "Husto Gustavo Vera is a pimp." And she doesn't mean that in a good way. Is a pimp sex trafficker and accomplice of the Pope. And I predicted, as I predicted, was tried for misappropriation of funds at Alameda and other illegal acts. God will do what is just someday. Amen. Have you ever noticed prostitutes can be kind of religious? Not that we hang out with yeah. prostitutes, but I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I, saw, ever- I saw a documentary with some Franciscan friars, and like they're all asking for prayers, and they like go to the friars and like pray for us tonight, make sure that nothing bad happens. To, I mean, they're going to sell their bodies on the street and like pray for us that we come back safe, and they're asking for prayers, you know. And and I read that like in Paris, the there was always a early early mass in the red light districts, like a five a.m. that the prostitutes would attend. They wouldn't receive communion. But they would go to these masses because they didn't want anyone to see them. Right. Kind of like a shame. What's it called? The walk of shame. Early in the morning, they would go go by a mass and attend a mass. So she's kind of like it? she's invoking God for her justice it's here. It's a Dostoevskyan thing. Like, I mean, Sonia, the, the, pro, right. you know, the, the prostitute Sonia that ends up helping Raskolnikov in Crime and Punishment to save his soul. Uh, you know, her situation was a little different. She was put into it by her father. But, yeah, there is this deep sort of at least literarily and i guess you're saying in real life profound connection between the people that see the lowest depths are right. are at least sort of 
at least incentivized to try to see the highest heights, you know, whether right. or not they're capable even of if, doing it. Even if they don't actually personally conform in divine charity. Right. Well, it's, it's also, I mean, I'm saying it's Dostoevsky, and Dostoevsky is just a, a great, you know, Eastern Orthodox, Russian Orthodox Christian. It's, it's very it's very Christian in a way. I mean, I don't want to sound like... Is it? Oh, well, Jesus, he, you know, the the women of, you know, think of Mary Magdalene. Yeah, but they converted. Well, they converted. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. So we're not talking. I'm not saying like we hadn't yet distinguished what level of prostitute. I'm not saying like <laughs> Natasha <laughs> High in our culture is a very Christian thing. I'm like, mm. that's not well, that's not what you meant. The, what I meant was it's the 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 prostitutes having the incentive to to maybe right. turn their lives around and are either they're either successful in the turnaround, a la Mary Magdalene, or right. they're not, a la Natasha Height. But it's there's a them it, it's a common thread in movies. There's yeah. a movie called City by the Sea, an old um, '90s De Niro movie, very very uh, intense. Um, and his son is dating. Oh, he got a hooker girlfriend, and they're both trying to get out of the life. The son ends up getting out of the life. The girlfriend doesn't. Mm. So it's it, it, they're both talking in Man, Christian that's terms. That's a bad one, kids. If you're in the future, if you're ever watching these videos. Don't date hookers. I don't understand that. No, that it doesn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> it doesn't it make doesn't, sense. That dog doesn't hunt again. Yeah, it's like uh, the police song, Roxanne. I never understood that song. You don't have to turn yeah. on your red light tonight. It's like, why don't you just go to church on Sunday and meet a nice girl there? It's so much easier and better. Yeah, there's a lot less dysfunction <laughs> well, when, you, when you meet someone at a church group or yeah. or a, a regular bar yeah. rather than a You're, strip bar. I mean, the, the, the standard's low enough where it's like, Normally, don't go to a bar to meet someone. But if you're dating hookers, you'll be stepping it up if yeah. you go to a bar to meet someone. Yeah. Yeah. If you're, if you're anyway. a 24 year old guy, go to a solemn high mass and then go to coffee afterwards and talk to some girls. That's that's how you get it done. That's how you get married. Okay, or ask them to dinner. Yeah, we yeah. need to go back to asking that's to right. dinner. And, that's right. Yeah, don't date hookers. No, you heard it here first on TNT. There's no don't. one else out there saying that's this. right. Special insight. That's right. It's in the Proverbs too, man. It's all the, the Proverbs is so against hookers and 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 yeah. and uh, and women who are who are uh, notorious, notorious. Right. <laughs> so um, yeah, I mean, so let's let's close up here by talking about Gustavo and who he is and what the allegation is. So as you said, Gustavo runs this nonprofit to, f- to fight sex trafficking and Hyde is saying, no, 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 this is organized crime. What he does is he'll go into a district. He'll identify who the sex traffickers are, the kingpins who are trading young people, women, prostitutes, gay prostitutes, everything. His nonprofit will bust that up and report them, shut it down. Right. Right. And then he'll move in once it's shut down and take over operations. There's also the allegation that he is funneling young people to clergy, to bishops, and even to the Vatican. That's a big claim. Yeah, that's more recent. Yeah, that's, that's the new stuff. Part. Natasha, does Natasha make that claim? I don't think she does, but others have. She herself runs a little, a little uh, makeshift interview with, a young, with this young man whose girlfriend is also a prostitute. And the, the, the girlfriend's the one claiming this info, uh, the girlfriend of the young man being interviewed by Natasha Height at some point last year, saying that, um, yeah, that the, the, the trafficking goes all the way and in some cases even directly to the Vatican. Yeah, that, that one's less vetted at this point. So I don't know. If, I mean, it could could turn out true, but I don't know. That's that's more new. The the stuff that I researched over the last Friday night, the weekend is I seems to be getting double and triple vetted. So yeah, keep your eye on that, as yeah. they say. Yeah, I had been following this story for a few months and and knew who Natasha Height was. So when it came out, um, people really? people started tweeting or and texting me early in that morning. Natasha Height's dead. I was like, ooh, this is bad. I, I hadn't heard of her this before. This is bad. When, you, had, you hadn't heard of her before? No. No, people had sent me you, people had sent me her video and and I'd seen her name in some of the, the talk show thing? Yeah, and yeah. some of the more like more um, you know, fringy websites, but I'd seen it. Hmm. Yeah, I think I texted you earlier that morning. I said, Hey, Natasha Height, the prostitute. Yeah. 
Wow. I just thought it was, hey, did you see this last night? That's the first time I ever heard her name. I watched okay. all about it, read all about it on Friday, and then you texted, and I was like, yeah, that's this is weird. Yeah, but she she's she's not a household name at that point. In, in <laughs> Hopefully, the she's not a household name in your yeah. home. Yeah. As for yeah. me in my house, we do not know who Natasha Hyde is. We serve the none. So um, this is this is bad okay. characters. Now, one thing I want to close with, and um, this is something that James Grind emphasized, and I've learned it from just talking to people. That's the weird thing about the show is we start talking to all these interesting people who have some of it are just crazy and have nothing good to say. Some people have good things to say. The modus operandi of these cartel, corrupt trafficking, drug dealing people is they always corrupt their witnesses, right? So if you're going to be a Bishop who preys upon seminarians, you're going to get them into alcohol and drugs, Right. You're going to encourage a lifestyle that's destructive because guess what? When they accuse you one day, you say, well, he's a morphine addict and an alcoholic, you know, right. and he has a porn problem or whatever. And then the accusation, just like if Natasha Hyde was a nun, this would be a big, a really big story. Right. But her character is clouded by her, her history of drug abuse and prostitution. Right. It's sort of the it's, it's the same reason why if you're going to join any criminal gang, disorganized, yes. this little little kid, uh, a Bugatto, like like right. Italian street gang that, that these kids will be mafiosos in 15 years, but not yet. Or just a little standard inner city American gang or a mafia of any sort a cabal. What's the first thing they make you do? Crime. Some crime. It's not to prove how tough you are. That's what I thought it was when I was a kid. And so they have something on you. Yeah. So you can't come out against them and, and reveal everything they've been doing. Right. That's, that's, that's why all organized crime and all syndicate crime, let's say, because it's some's more organized than others. They all operate this way. Yeah. I love the witness. Exactly. So moving forward, I, I imagine in 2019, we'll have many more allegations against bishops and clergy, maybe even the Pope himself. And they are going to come probably from people who have been somewhat compromised. That's the name of the game. You know, what? and all these yeah. stories of young men, they all, they're, all of these priests are giving alcohol and drugs to the boys they molest. Almost every yeah, story sure. I've read. Sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, yeah, it's, it's also part of the alleged, you know, much of it is fabricated. Most of it is fabricated, but the date rape culture, wherever it actually happens, date rape, I mean, you know, many accounts are false, but there are true accounts. It usually involves judgment, uh, mind altering substances. Yeah. Mind altering substances. But one thing I want to point out just to, to take it, I mean, we can, we can go back into the specifics in a second, but when you hear skepticism from the man here, uh, I, mean, I might, Taylor might disagree, might agree, I don't know, but, but I'm, I'm at least only speaking for myself. When there's skepticism about one of the good guys on my end, particularly one of the good guys in the church going silent for a while, the reason I don't like this so much not that I have any extra information, I'm privy to nothing that people out there watching don't know, but it makes me suspicious, given what I just said and what, what you just said about the nature of organized crime, it makes me suspicious that this good guy that had chutzpah and had some fire lit under him has gone silent because like, okay, we have this on you. We're going to, we're going to share it. That, that's always why I don't like that. Why, why did so-and-so go silent for 18 months? They're doing good work. Well, I, right. I can't, it's hard for me to imagine any other reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah, blackmail is the biggest weapon right now in the higher uh, levels of the church. Yeah. yeah. And and it's probably part of the elevation process, like in a gang. You know, if there's a right. guy who has nothing on him, he's probably not going to be made Archbishop of New York. Or, you know, probably not going to happen. Right. Not that we know that there's anything no. you know, people will be writing about Arch. What about what do you know about the Archbishop in your? I don't. Well, we don't know anything. We're just speculating. But it's reasonable speculation yeah. because this is how organized right. crime works. And we have Exhibit A, which is the most prominent see in America is the Archbishop Cardinal of Washington D.C. And we had a really bad one. 
Worst one ever. <laughs> he, got burned. he got the yeah. highest post, folks. Not by an accident. It was contrived. It was planned. It was planned in Rome, and it was planned by the nuncios here and by the bishops here. Everything was orchestrated. Yeah, and Everything once burned, twice up. shy, you know? Mm-hmm. Once burned, twice shy. I mean, this is where it's like, again, I don't want to be on the hook for slander or libel for anything I'm saying on this show, neither do you, but it's like, you know, this is this is reasonable speculation. Once burned, twice shy. Like, I'm seeing the patterns here, you know? I'm not a criminal. I've never been a criminal, but yep. it's not that... But I'm pretty good at like recognizing patterns, you know. So so are you. We're, we've been doing this show, yeah. you know. What two out of three of the TNT shows are kind of on breaking news? I don't know I, if I had to guess. And um, at least since September October, and it's like I'm seeing patterns here emerge really closely. And I did study criminal law, and so I'm not saying any of this is set. But once burned, twice shy. I'm seeing where I'm seeing what they're doing with this. It's it's smart the organized syndicate protocols, but they're not that smart. They're not that hard to figure out. Yep. Yeah. If your dog down here in Texas runs into a cactus twice, they stay away from cactus. That's just right. Same with, you know, if I, if I'm walking down the street at eight thirty PM and a guy with a, a Chicago bulls hat and Chicago bulls shirt and jacket sticks me up and takes my wallet. And then two weeks later, a guy with a Chicago bulls hat and shirt Hits me with a baseball bat, and two weeks later, later a guy with a Chicago Bulls a hat and and shirt beats me up. Well, every time I see somebody with a Chicago Bulls hat and shirt on, I'm going to be a little afraid and run away from that guy. You're telling us you're not a Bulls fan. I'm saying I'm not a Bloods fan, right? <laughs> right. 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 Uh, or put in the Crips or whatever you want to do. But I mean, that's just habituation, and we right. lay Catholics are now being habituated by Pope Francis and others. To see these things. Zanchetta. Uh, naked masturbation selfies. Hey, congratulations. You just got upgraded to look over the apostolic sees patrimony in Rome. Lifted yeah. out of Argentina where you could be tried. Now he's got accu- accusations against him by seminarians and priests. That's, that's not how the real world works. No. But, some reason, but some reason the Catholic Church which claims to be the kingdom of God on earth, the mystical body of Christ. That's how it does work. Explain that to me again. I don't, I don't get that. The standard should be higher. It should be way right? higher. I mean, this is the, even the Gandhi protocol, even though it's a stupid conclusion. Old Gandhi came to the Gandhi protocol, at least acknowledges that it's a much higher standard than worldly standards. I want to say, I want to say one thing about what you were just saying about the Chicago bulls. I think there's wisdom, much wisdom in it. Um, this is actually the last thing I'll say, but, um, remember AI, artificial intelligence, it was supposed to be like a big deal in the nineties. Remember that when we were like, whatever young teenagers were here and it was going to take over everything in the late nineties. I robot. I robot. Yeah. 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 All that stuff. The reason it got hung up, it went dark for a while, like, like decades, like early two thousands, you weren't hearing about it. Now it's driving all the, the, the tech stuff out here in you know Northern Cal, it, they, they finally kind of overcame a lot of their problems. You know what their problem, you know what the major snag was with AI? Pattern recognition. Mm. A human, there's something unique. This is very interesting for me and you as Thomistic philosophers. There's something unique about the human intellect that no, although these mainframe supercomputers that they had in the 90s, can do equations and formula and algorithms literally millions times faster than the human brain. So they ought to be able to think, you know, they always did that when AI was first introduced, these are thinking supercomputers. The reason that they can't, they they got snagged so much is because they couldn't reduplicate the unique human function of even a baby, a one and a half year old of pattern recognition. If you do this, you do right. that two times to to a human yeah. baby, not a not a mainframe supercomputer right. that knows how to do math. And baby doesn't know what the hell math is. But you do this twice to a baby, he gets it's a game. Yeah, and, and starts he, laughing. And the pattern recognition is you don't have to be told it's a, a pattern. You start laughing as a human baby. It's unique. That's why people, when you're trying to sign into your Yahoo or your Google account, and they're trying to fool the bot, are you a human? That's why they're like, it's a pattern recognition yeah. thing. The squares with yeah. which of these have that. a. Ha- 
have a car yeah, in it. Yeah, I, I hate that. Yeah, which have a car in it. The, the, the bots can't figure it out because like, wait, would it be part of the car, the whole car, all that? My point in saying this is that the left, secular left, left in the church, it's basically the same thing as far as I'm concerned at this point. The left is always trying to dole, to turn you into a dullard by shame, dole yes. shaming you into not using your pattern recognition with things like the, the, the Vols guy that keeps, yeah. that evidently is victimized Dr. Taylor Marshall three weekends in no, a row. No, you didn't tell horrible. me about that. It's horrible. Yeah, but you, so it, it's happening. Um, it, it, they shame you into not recognizing patterns. And it's something that is proven by science in a negative way to be the unique capacity of the human soul, the intellective part of the human soul. And that's, that's what, all we're doing here on TNT is just like, I'm recognizing patterns. They don't always pan out, but it is the unique function. What's unique about men? Reason, you know, men and men and women, human beings. It's, it's our reason. And what's unique about our reason? All this AI stuff told us it was not just that we can do math. Monkeys can't do math. Computers can do that. They can't recognize patterns. And that's all we're doing here on this show when we do the current events. Yeah. And when you take an IQ test, a lot of it's patterns, identifying yeah, pa yes. complicated patterns. And that's a survival yes. That's a survival mechanism. If your uncle got eaten by a saber-toothed tiger and your cousin got eaten by a saber-toothed tiger, then you figure out, whenever I see that animal, hear the growl, whatever, I got to be, I got to grab my spear because I'm going to get eaten by a saber-toothed tiger. If you can't make That's those patterns. Yeah, yeah, if you can't make those patterns and then figure out outcomes from those patterns very quickly, even with limited data, you're going to die. A so saber tooth will be going through your flesh. That's right. That's soon. right. That's right. So we have, we have developed this. And uh, or if you eat that berry, everyone in your tribe eat, eats that berry and got sick. Don't right. eat that berry. It's a pattern. <laughs> it's, a yeah. pattern. it's a pattern. It's Yeah. So. All right. Well, there it is. There's I'm sure more will come out. It's it's uh, sad that Natasha passed away. However, she did pass away. May she rest in peace. And um, let's just pray for more clarity moving forward. I just I want more of this to come to light. I want to know what's going on. And and hopefully the leadership in the Catholic Church not just in America. I mean, we're not picking on America, folks. We're in Argentina all day today looking at uh, this Gustavo guy. And uh, I think there'll be more coming out with him. There's some other videos on YouTube you can watch um, related to uh, Gustavo Vera. What's his full name? You know, these, it's long. I, think. I know these Spanish, Spanish. Um, I, have, I respect it, by the way. Uh, I'm seeing here Justo Gustavo Vera. So, okay, I thought so, it was longer than that. Yeah, maybe it is. That might be the short version. So look them up. And um, thanks for watching, everyone. Please like this video. Please hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell to be notified. Pray the rosary. Fight the fight. Um, these kind of things, I mean, they can get you down, but don't be discouraged. Right? Christ died on the cross. He rose again for our justification. He has won the war. He will win the war again when he comes to judge the living and the dead. So... This is just a valley of tears, but we're going to go up the mountain, right? We're just in the valley of tears, but then we go up. So um, everybody, like, follow, subscribe, pray the rosary, follow us on Twitter, um, support on Patreon. If you listen on audio, please review on iTunes, as I said earlier, and uh, that'll be that. Signing off.